You know, if you're not following me on social and if you're not subscribed to this channel, what are you really doing? Like what's really going on? You're missing out. Listen, I'm so, so, so excited. I know that it's been a week, but I told you all I was booked. My last video, I told you all I was booked. By the way, thank you all for all of the outpouring of love. I really appreciate it. Um, I got a lot of messages about my LA journey video. So I really appreciate that. Shout out to everyone who commented. Now, the importance of today, I know that I've been telling you all all month about the significance of this Pride Month, how it's been 50 years since the Stonewall uh, uprising in Greenwich Village in New York City, but this, today is the day. June 28th is the day that Marsha P. Johnson threw that shot glass uh, in opposition to police brutality. And that is when the gay rights movement kind of kicked off. So happy pride once again to everyone. You know, as someone who is naturally inquisitive like myself, like I, I like to look at myself as naturally inquisitive and a researcher. I first went to my first pride in when I was 18, like in 2006, I want to say. And it struck me when I, as I've been reading and learning about more about the origins of Pride that I never did this back then. Like I just looked at it as a party, that's what it was. It was a party, that's how it was branded to me. You know, so it wasn't until like 2012 when I first met Janet Mock that uh, I learned about Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera. She was teaching a seminar in Chicago and this was before the book and everything. So yeah, Pride. Also, really quickly, I was featured in, on a Crooked Media podcast titled Crooked Minis. They did a four-episode uh, podcast series this month for the L, the G, the B, and the T and media representation. Go check that out. It's available everywhere that podcasts are streaming. Um, that's with Crooked Media. Travell hosted. I was with Zachary Drucker. And we really just chatted it up about like the history a brief history of, of trans representation throughout the years. Also, uh, this year marks the 25th anniversary of Acts of Faith by Iyanla Van Zant. You guys know I'm always trying to read something. I just recently ordered this from Amazon and what I like about this is it's daily meditations and kind of affirmations for, of, for people of color. This is on the New York Times bestsellers list. It was called back then, 25 years ago, it was called The Little Purple Book, but as you can see, they've redone the cover. And literally, it's easy reading. It just, I don't know if you all can see if it's focusing, but it just goes day by day. Everything's dated. I got a little post-it, a little uh, index card kind of as my bookmark. And so kind of when I finish my prayers in the morning, this is a book that I now crack open to read. And Iyan was also on tour. I think I'm going to go. She's not coming to LA, but I'm, I, might, I might slide through the Chicago stop. We'll see. So anyway, back to uh, pride-related things. I have to shout out my uh, just my possibility model model i'm so proud to call her a friend a, a sister a mentor janet mock just inked a multi-million dollar deal with netflix it was just announced and i'm so 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 excited she's working on a few different projects but i'm not going to tell you about it i'm going to let the video do the talking hi i'm janet mock i'm an author the writer producer and director of pose I am announcing my overall deal with Netflix. This deal is so bonkers. I, of course, will be writing and directing and developing a few hush-hush projects that I can't really talk about. But one of them is a half-hour drama and another is a college series. So I'm really excited for that. This is the first kind of deal of its kind for a trans person, no less a trans woman of color. You know, 84% of Americans say that they don't know and or work with a trans person. And so there's potential now with Netflix's worldwide audience to introduce millions, hundreds of millions of viewers to trans people and showing people who may not understand us that we can tell our own stories. Shout out to Strong Black Lead and Netflix for that video. I'm so excited to see what Janet is gonna give us. I know that it's gonna be true to form. She's doing such a great job on Pose. I'm very excited about Pose. I haven't had a chance to talk to you all really about this season, but in case you don't know, there will not be an episode this upcoming week. It'll return next week. But uh, between you and I, just between us, 
I don't think Blanca's gonna make it to season three. By the way, they were renewed for season three. But there's something about like, when I was reading all of the press leading up to this season of Pose, uh, everybody was kind of saying the same things as far as like, oh, we wanted you to fall in love with the characters, you know, season one. Season one was strictly for you to get to know and fall in love with these characters. Season two is going to explore what happens when you don't prioritize yourself and handle your business. And I feel like, you know, with the Emmy campaign, they're really campaigning for uh, MJ Rodriguez, who plays Blanca. They're really campaigning for her to get the uh, Emmy nomination for best actress in like a TV drama or whatever. And just the way the storylines go, you just gotta pay attention. You gotta pay attention and it would suck. I'd be so mad, but for something in my spirit, something deep in the seat of my soul is telling me that Blanca Evangelista might not make it throughout season two. Let me know your thoughts if you've been watching Post. We're three episodes in this season, so you still have time to catch up. It's three hours of TV, well, three and a half, because the premiere was an hour and a half long. So yeah, let me know how you feel about that. Also, I'm very, very excited, the likes of Wendy Williams. I'll be taking off work these days. Wendy Williams and Billy Porter are part of the 2020 class of the Hollywood Walk of Fame. They will be getting their stars next year, sometime within the next two years. But it's a whole bunch of people. I believe it's 35 uh, people within the next two years scheduled to get their stars on the Walk of Fame, including Alicia Keys, Andy Cohen, Mahershala Ali, Spike Lee, Julia Roberts, 50 Cent, uh, uh, Ruth E. Carter, which is one that I'm personally very, very excited about. About because I interviewed Ruth in 2017 on the red carpet for the ABFF honors and just to see how her star has risen she's a costume designer by the way she did Black Panther she did a whole bunch of stuff but to see you know she just won the Oscar this year and just to see Ruth get her roses like it warms my heart so I'm very very excited about that have you all been watching Euphoria on HBO listen we're two episodes in I've been my Sunday nights are are just insane. I got Euphoria I'm watching. I'm watching the Potomac Housewives. I'm watching the Kardashians. And what else am I watching? There's a show I'm missing out on. There's a show I'm missing out on. Big Little Lies. And I was watching The Shy before they did their, their season um, finale. And that's like five and a half hours worth of TV, including Watch What Happens Live, depending on who the guest is. But Euphoria, if you are not watching... <laughs> I encourage you to check it out. Because I have some friends that still have not watched yet. Euphoria is the new show that's starring Zendaya. It is on HBO. It's teens. It's sex, drugs, rock and roll. It's a little graphic. It's a little explicit. It's it, it, They need uh, some, some, some trigger warnings for a few scenes. But I like it because of the trans character, Jules. She kind of fuels the story for me because I like what the writers did as far as not making her transness a big deal. Um, if you catch it, then you catch it. But just some of those... Oh, like Zendaya's character, it's centered around her, but she irks the hell out of me. Oh, she irks me. But I said that I'm going to give it three episodes to determine whether or not it is the show for me. So next week, well, this upcoming Sunday, we'll mark the third episode and, and we'll come back and talk about it next week to see if it was the show for you as well. Um, Mary J. Blige, I'm so excited. I did the BET Awards on Sunday. I worked their red carpet. And I liked the carpet, but you know, my one critique BET is you need a tent for media. That is a four hour carpet with the sun beaming down on you. I almost died. But you know, they gifted us with nice, uh, like these huge leather fanny packs that had, you know, a little water and snacks in it, but we need a tent. We need a tent. That was cruel and unusual punishment. But uh, I did the BET Awards and you know, ratings were down this year. Ratings were like 2.2 million. And I feel like it's because we're in such a click baity society. We're in, a, we're in a culture that likes little spliffs of things. People aren't watching award shows. Ratings are down on every award show. You know what I'm saying? Also, BET did not have the, the star power, the mass, I'm gonna say the mass star power that they used to have. Like, yes, I saw DJ Khaled. Yes, I saw Mary J. Blige, Regina King. I mean, Regina Hall, excuse me, Regina Hall, uh, Tyler Perry. Yes, I saw that. But also there was an influx of like Instagram people and reality stars. And there's nothing wrong with that, but it's just like, look at the, the demographic you're appealing to. My mom didn't watch the BET Awards, but maybe my little cousins did. I watched it. I mean, I worked the carpet and then I turned around and watched it because I needed to see what Regina did. And I think we can all agree she did such a great job as a host. I love the Beyonce, the, the homecoming knot, the DC shout out. It was good. 
Um, but Mary J. Blige, she did a phenomenal job. She was honored with the Lifetime Achievement Award. No artist performed for her. I saw Fantasia before the show and no hair, no makeup. I immediately assumed that Fantasia was there to, to tribute Mary, but that was not the case. Mary did her own tribute. She did a great job. Tyler Perry also won um, the Icon Award and they honored the life and legacy of Nipsey Hussle. Now I saw some conversation online critiquing Nipsey Hussle's mother's speech calling her, you know, all different types of nut bags and things like that, but that's not what I got from that. Nipsey's mom drew me in so much with her speech that I wanna inquire, like I, I wanna know everything about this woman. Does she do private sessions? Can we have a conversation? She seemed magic, almost magical to me, otherworldly. Her sense of understanding the, uh, the way that she was able to process the death of her child is something that I sat in awe of as I was watching it because I'd never seen, ever seen anything like that. I'd never seen anyone um, be able to articulate with such grace after suffering such a, a, a huge loss. So I wanna know more about Nipsey's mom. I, I was intrigued. What did you think about the awards as a whole? I liked the performances, liked Fantasia's performance, Riri was there, liked Old Town Road, Cardi and Offset, it was good. This was a good year for the BT Awards. Did you all see Shaka Khan on Watch What Happens Live the other night? Oh, Shaka was a little twitchy and she was slurring that speech. I know that you drink on Watch What Happens Live, but if you know like I know, Shaka has had her struggles with, you know, substances. She's been in, in rehab a few times, but the most revealing thing to me is Shaka hated uh, through the wire, Kanye's song. When when we when we loved Kanye, he's a hometown hero for Chicago. Like I love Through the Wire, but take a look at what she had to say about Through the Wire. I did my drinks. I said, oh, yeah, I use it. Then when I came, I was like, the wire. They let me get a little like like you know, <laughs> right. some kind fast of fast forward. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was fast. I was pissed. <laughs> you were. I thought it was a little insulting. And I, I, I'm not insulting. I thought it was stupid. Right. Yeah. Did you? <laughs> now she hates it. She calls it stupid. She's, you know, she, she did not like it. But later on in that clip, in the extended version, she did reveal Andy asked her, you know, did you get coin off of that? And she's like, of course I got paid. So that kind of sucks. That kind of sucks. Do you think that Kanye might have misled her? I don't think he did. The way that she described the phone call, I don't think that Kanye was uh, faking and fronting and misleading her. So, yeah. Um... What else did I wanna to talk to you about? One Day at a Time got picked up and renewed. Um, if you're not familiar with One Day at a Time, it was canceled unceremoniously by Netflix. It's a great sitcom. Um, a family that lives, you know, in, in Echo Park in Los Angeles. I believe that they're Cuban and they deal with a lot of real life, real world type things. It's a reboot from Norman Lear. You know, he was doing all the sitcoms, the Jeffersons and All in the Family and all of that back in the day. And so one day, at, this One Day at a Time that was on Netflix was a reboot, but they got canceled and now they just got picked back up for, from some network work that I've never heard of, but it's a CBS affiliate. Oh, going back to Mary J. Blige, I forgot. Mary also has a MAC line that she just released. <laughs> well, a lipstick. It's called Love Me. It's a pinky beige. It's available online and in stores at MAC Cosmetics right now. She also inked a deal with Lionsgate. So happy for Mary J. Blige. It, it, it's under her uh, Blue Butterfly production company, and she's going to be uh, working on a TV series from Lionsgate, and she also has creative reign to work on other things and develop other things. So Mary, it's winning season for Mary J. Blige man so happy for her um i think we've reached the end of our video have you checked out the american horror story have you seen american horror story 1984 the, the teaser for that it looks kind of promising you all know that i'm an ahs fan which is weird because i hate horror movies but yeah that's all i want to talk to you about this week i think also i do think not that you all asked but i do think that Nicki minaj is pregnant i do i do she says she's not but I think she is. And we'll just have to wait and see. And I'm gonna to talk to you later on about uh, her getting that marriage license with that that man. Ugh, look up his record. I'll put it, I'll put it in, I'll put the link in the description box. In the meantime, between time, take care of yourselves. Um, and I will talk to you next time. All right, guys, bye-bye.